In the book, you've gone into quite intimate details about how the president has sex. Uh, why did you do that? Um, to prove that I was telling the truth, um, so that, uh, you know, I actually don't make it a habit to kiss and tell. I feel, you know, part of me feels guilty about doing that. But by recounting every detail, I think it's obvious that I know things that only someone who had actually experienced and been there would know. And I would have never included any of those things or, you know, um, kissed and tell for, you know, lack of a better explanation if it wasn't for the fact that I was being called a liar. Many of us thought the world couldn't get much crazier, yet here we are in 2018 hearing descriptions about the shape of the president's penis. Uh, was that all part of the truth-telling, or was the aim there to, on one level, just humiliate him? No, of course not. I would never humiliate um, someone for no reason, you know, or for any reason. I mean, that's body shaming or sex shaming or betrayal. And um, it was that he attacked me first. I was called a liar, um, that it never happened. And unless he's had a, a penis transplant, then I'm pretty sure that's a checkmate. The relationship, as you say, would have been completely forgotten if 10 years later he hadn't decided to stand for president. Um, so it was a decade or so later, 2015, 2016, his lawyers, his henchmen, mm -hmm. arrived to ask you to sign a non-disclosure agreement. Did you understand um, what that was about then, or did you sign in a hurry? What was your feeling as um, they took you away? I did understand. Yes, I signed in a hurry, but I did understand. Uh, I had every intention of upholding the terms of the agreement. I wasn't the one that broke it or leaked it. Um, the only reason I ever came for it was to defend myself. So when people put it to you that essentially you signed and you took the money and you knew it was hush money, you say, well, so what? I do now. I, have, I held on to the terms of the agreement longer than, than they did. Uh, Michael Cohen was out trying to pitch a book about me, talking about my name, how much he would paid me, everything. I wasn't the one that was talking. It was him. And then I just wanted to be able to defend myself. Um, nothing's worse than other people being able to speak for you and call you names and um, you're attacked from every direction, both by strangers, which is, you know, totally fine, I don't care, but by people you actually know. and. You know, the reason I came forward was I went through the agreement and realized that, first of all, it wasn't valid and that they had breached it. You didn't have to be quiet, of course. You didn't have to take the money. You could have said, I'm going to tell my side of the story before they even come near me. What stopped you? Lots of things. Uh, I had been asked to tell the story. I had been offered money numerous times. Honestly, I thought it was tacky. Um, that's not what I wanted to be known for. That's not what I wanted to drag my family through. That's not what I wanted to expose friends to. I didn't want people showing up and knocking on my door and having my young daughter be like, oh, what's this man with a camera? Why are these people following us? That was never my intention. I didn't need the money. I am not a former porn star. I'm not a former adult direct film director. I had a very successful career. I was very happy doing what I was doing and settled into what I considered to be a a good life in Texas with my family and, you know, competing my horses with a great group of friends. Uh, I never wanted any of this to happen. You describe uh, in the book a fear that your life was in danger, that you were going to be possibly mysteriously bumped off. Did you actually think at some point that Trump was going to have you killed? Um, I don't know if I think that it was Trump, I, you know, necessarily. I, the, you know, at this point, all I had to go on in reference to him specifically was the encounters that I had had personally with him. And he didn't seem to me at the time a man who would, would necessarily do that. And by signing the NDA, I thought I was accomplishing two things at once. One, making sure that the story was stopped and didn't hurt anyone I knew, but at the same time, making there be an actual physical record um, of, a, of a relationship between me and, and Michael Cohen and, and the president. People have read and heard your story and of course I guess it's easy for them to say look the encounter was a transaction. You both knew the way the world worked in the way that paid sex is a transaction that you were hoping to get a part on The Apprentice. You knew what you were getting into originally when you were looking mm -hmm. for fame and fortune. Um, it's no surprise that you would end up getting hurt in that situation. 
Um, it was a, cons a very consensual encounter. I was not paid that night. I was not offered money. It was not prostitution. Um, but yes, uh, you know, it was two consenting adults. He, you know, mentioned something about a part on a TV show. It was never specifically said, hey, if you have sex with me, I will give you this. Um, it wasn't anything like that. But it was definitely not a Me Too moment. And that's another really irritating thing is when people think that it, I was either a prostitute or a victim. I was neither. It's seriously, if what had happened back then was all that had happened, mm. it wouldn't be a big deal. The people need to focus on the issue here, which is what happened in relation to the election. And what he did as a result of that, you're saying? Exactly, yes. Uh, it sounds like you didn't feel he was listening to you particularly when you were talking about horses or you were talking about your passions. He kind of glazed over and just wanted to talk about golf. Uh, that was like the first 20 minutes, uh, you know, after the infamous spanking and I showed him that, you know, I had a brain and could hold my own and hold conversation and I didn't have a problem checking him. Um, the conversation evolved into a, you know, a normal, two-sided, interesting uh, exchange. If you look at the Brett Kavanaugh scenario that's being played out as we speak, has this whole saga where a woman has come forward to offer her testimony of sexual abuse and her president has chosen to mock her, do you think it's emboldened women, more women to come forward, or do you think it's made men feel that they'll be protected? I think both. Um, everyone has their own experience and and takes their own you know feelings away from it. I think that his actions have infuriated some other women, which has driven them forward in solidarity because they're so angry. Um, and at the same time, it's probably scared a lot of victims into to continue hiding. They don't want to be shamed or um, attacked, called names, because it does happen. Trust me, I'm, I'm living it right now. Christine Blasey Ford gave her testimony last week. We've heard from the porn star. We've heard from the professor. Is there any difference, ultimately, as to whether your testimonies are believed? I think that people are quicker to discredit and discount me because I work in the adult business. For some reason, people think that work, uh, sex workers, you know, which includes strippers, uh, porn stars, porn producers, um, somehow don't know right from wrong and are less human. Um, I experience it every day. Uh, they, for some reason, think that because of my job, I am to be trusted less than someone who is perhaps like a, a school teacher or an accountant. But I guess what we've seen proves the opposite, doesn't it? That Christine Blasey Ford, who's an academic and a professor, um, still wasn't believed by many Republicans either. Exactly. But I think that she has more support from other women. Um, I'm very grateful to all the women who have stood up and supported me, but some of the nastiest comments I've gotten or for, are from other women who think that I am not worth believing or that I'm inhuman because I work in the adult business and my job shouldn't have anything to do with, with my character. How do you think Trump will be remembered as a president? <laughs> I think time will only tell. It's, it's not over yet.